Hey, you're listening to the Timmy Riggs Podcast, Life in the Meantime. Hey, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm guessing I know this much about you. You have plenty of moments where you feel FOMO, right? Where you feel like you're missing out or maybe where you feel like uh, you're not where you want to be. We have created a culture, hands down, that has only uh, maybe made this feeling more consistent or happen more abruptly, or uh, whatever you might say, strengthen it, right? We live in a social media age where you see everybody's, I think uh, one guy has said it, everybody's highlight reel while you're living your behind the scenes. So it's so easy to feel like you get to this place of like, man, I wish I had that, I wish I was on that vacation, I wish my family got along, like that family seems to get along. I'm guessing they don't get along as much as you think they do. But uh, this just happened to me. A couple of weeks ago, I started following this guy called the Liver King, right? His name's Brian Johnson, doesn't really matter. Point is, super buff guy on social media, kind of just came out of nowhere. And uh, he is all about living, living the ancestral ways. He calls it the ancestral nine tenets, and that is living like our ancestors, right? Uh, the thing that really sets him apart is that he eats raw meat, raw liver, raw beef, all kinds of raw stuff, right? He eats his eggs raw, and uh, he's super extreme, super intense. There's a lot of things I actually really like about him. Uh, he's real big on limiting screen time at home. There's a little box that they put their phones in when they get home. Um, he has very limited amount of like Wi-Fi and stuff around his home. They're huge on being outside and in the sun as much as possible. He just believes that like so many of the common day uh, illnesses or sicknesses have to do with the fact that we're just eating so many bad foods, so many processed foods. And those are all kind of things that like I can really get on board with. But I realized that the more and more that I was consuming his stuff, the more and more I was feeling like I was missing out. Like I didn't live up to the liver king way of life, right? Like I didn't have enough or I wasn't uh, as uh, regimented in my schedule and in my working out and in my eating. And I truly started feeling like, oh, uh, like uh, what's the point of my life, right? And I think it's this. I, I don't believe that contempt, that feeling of lack, frustration, feeling like you're missing something, like you're not good enough, you don't measure up, you're not like so-and-so, and gratitude, a life where it's the opposite. You're completely grateful for everything that you have. You realize, man, I get to take another breath today. I got blood flowing through my veins unassisted. I did nothing for that. I have eyelids that keep the dirt out of my eyes, the dust out of my eyes. That feeling of gratitude. I don't believe the contempt and gratitude can live in the same space in your life, in your heart, and in your mind. Now, don't get me wrong, I think you can have moments, which is kind of where I was, where I was going back and forth, but that's exhausting. I, I wanna live a life that's kind of grounded, that's consistent in gratitude. So here is my focus, right? Jesus is uh, walking along, teaching some people, and one of his guys named Matthew records Jesus saying this. He says, hey, don't you see the birds in the air? They eat, don't they? Don't you see the fields, how pretty they are, how, how pretty the flowers are when they bloom, even green grass? Don't you see how beautiful that stuff is? And you guys are so worried about all the other things. You're looking out, you're having FOMO. Look at this stuff. It seems like minuscule minor things in the grand scheme of life, and yet God cares about those things. Don't you think he cares even more about you? Don't you believe he's going to get you the food you need, the basic necessities you need, right? And I love how the message records it. Jesus is kind of saying, hey, I, I don't want you to be so consumed by the latest fashions and the latest trends and, and all the latest necessities, the next big thing. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. I want you to focus less on getting and more on God's giving. I love those things as they run parallel because in both scenarios, you're actually receiving. He says, I don't want you to focus so much about getting. I mean, you're getting things. Instead, I want you to focus on God's giving. What's the difference? One is rooted, I believe, in lack, in that mindset of contempt, that mindset of like, I, I don't have enough, I need to get more. Whereas the other one is rooted in gratitude. God, thank you for all that you've given me. Thank you for a heart that's pumping, for friends, 
for family, for the ability to see colors, to taste foods. Thank you for that. And no matter where your life is, maybe, maybe you can't smell because you just had COVID or something. I don't know. But there are always little micro things that we can find to be happy for. And so my practice that I'm trying to do more in life, and I think maybe it would be good for you too, is to instead of being zoomed out and seeing everybody else's life, all the great things and seeing all the things that I'm missing out on, I want to zoom in. I want to focus on the areas of my life, maybe micro gratitude moments, right? Like I said before, man, I got eyelids. How often do I thank God for my eyelids? That's a huge deal. And I'm so thankful for that. My eyelashes, right? Uh, and uh, my skin, my simple clothes that I have, just to be able to throw some things on. I, I have enough. I have plenty. I can go to the grocery store and I can buy food. And have you looked around at the grocery store? You ever look at some of those fruits? They're insane. You've seen a dragon fruit lately? They'll blow your mind. You're like, I can't believe that's real. If you just think about it for a second, right? I think about this and I tell people this. If, you, if, if giraffes didn't exist, right? And you just saw them in a movie, you'd be like, that's insane. That'd be a wild animal. But they exist. And we get to see them. They have these super long necks. The same with elephants and monkeys and so many different things that we can be like, wow, I'm grateful that I get to be a part of that. And here's what I believe for real. The gratitude is just like complaining. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And so you get to choose. Where do I want to be rooted? Do I want to be only focused on getting that's only going to lead me to feeling lack, feeling like I'm missing out on something? Or do I want to focus on God's giving? All the amazing things I have in my life. I get to FaceTime my parents. They live a thousand miles away. And in this day and age, I get to hop on pretty much every night and see their face. That's amazing as I talk to them. And so I want to focus more on those little things. I want to zoom in on the micro things I get to be grateful for. My daughter learning how to laugh, learning how to crawl. Those are the things I want to care about. The rest of it, it's going to come. And it continues in Matthew where he says, hey, you seek the kingdom of God first. Everything else is going to be taken care of. So I hope that no matter where you are on this week, that uh, if you're feeling down, if you're overwhelmed by maybe all the stuff out there, it doesn't take long. You spend two, three minutes on Instagram or Facebook, you feel like you're missing out. But, but I want to encourage you, maybe it's reorienting your focus and saying, no, no, I'm going to focus on the things that God has already given me, and I'm going to do little tiny steps. Maybe it's just writing it down, 10 things a day, five things a day, simple micro moments of gratitude. Hopefully that'll help you, because in the meantime, we're trying to live healthier whole lives, and uh, I think if you sprinkle some more gratitude in there, you're going to be well on your way.